All right, it's finally time to talk about Romanian politics as you guys have been requesting this video time and time again. Now, before we start, let's try and be civil and not make any jokes regarding uh, darker skinned people that came to Europe in the medieval ages and that are a bit more disproportionately located in Romania, okay? <laughs> to explain a web series on the internet with the shittiest mic on earth where we talk about the shittiest countries on earth and in today's episode we'll be talking about Romania a country located in southeastern Europe whose inhabitants get disproportionately angry when being called Eastern European mm, what do you mean Eastern Europe we are Central Europe not Eastern is this how an Eastern European looks no, I don't think so Romania is also considered by many to be a part of the Balkan region even though, geographically, it sits just above the Danube River, which divides civilization from barbarism, also known as the EU. Statistically, Romania has 20 million people living within its borders, which is a bit more than its other European counterparts. With so many people, it is only natural that you would find many blood-sucking vampires among them, also known as politicians, who together form one of humanity's worst inventions a government. Now, like most European countries, Romania is considered a democracy. However, unlike most of its EU brethren, who are identified as parliamentary republics, Romania's flavor of government is a bit different. Romania's government is officially classified as a semi-presidential representative democratic republic, which essentially means that the Romanian president actually has a function and isn't just a pretty face. Unlike in some other countries, <coughs> Estonia? I'd also say Kosovo, but Kosovo isn't a country. Basically, Romania's head of government, who is the executive power for internal matters, is the prime minister. Meanwhile, the president is the head executive power when it comes to external matters, where he or she represents the country in international politics and signs decrees and approves some laws. Meanwhile, Romania's legislative powers are vested into its parliament, which are also split into two, which in turn makes its parliament a bicameral one similar to the one in the United States. The two powers of the Romanian parliament are the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate. Together they make the laws that make Romania functional, or should I say, uh, dysfunctional. Finally, the last branch of the Romanian government is the judicial branch of government, which is vested in a system of hierarchical courts, of which the most important one is the Supreme Court, also known as the Curte de Cassatie și Justitie. Now that we know how the government works in theory, let's find out how it works in practice. Now, unlike the US, who claims that it is a multi-party system but has only had two political parties uh, in office for its 250 years of existence, Romania is an actual multi-party democracy and has a plethora of political parties which all want to screw up the country in their own unique way. With that in mind, I'll only be covering the parties which are in parliament in 2021. So, if I miss a party, which was previously uh, quite important in Romania, uh, that's probably why. First up, we have the most popular political party within Romania, the Social Democratic Party, or Partidul Social Democrat in Romanian, or PSD for short. The current political party came into existence in 2001, however, it technically dates back to 1992, as it's sort of a predecessor to the Democratic National Front, which is a party that was founded by Ion Iliescu, uh, who was the predecessor of the infamous Romanian president, Nicolae Ceaușescu. Now, as you can infer from the name and its communist founder, the party is predominantly a left-wing party. Now, the party follows the ideologies of social democracy and left-wing nationalism and populism. However, unlike your regular leftist party, PSD also identifies as a social conservative party and slightly Eurosceptic, which essentially makes it leftist when it comes to economics and right-wing when it comes to social issues. Considering the party came into existence from the former communist rulers of Romania, PSD is no stranger to controversy. And oh boy, is it controversial. Some of the main points of critique for PSD are that they suppress the freedom of the press, they indulge in corruptive practices, and use their power in office for personal gain. Now, I'm not saying this, th this is all alleged, so... Uh, Please don't ban me from Romania, ooh, ooh. However, one of the most controversial events regarding the party was in 2018, when the founding member of the party, Ion Iliescu, 
got charged for committing crimes against humanity in the aftermath of the 1989 revolution. In a nutshell, Iliescu brought many industrial workers from the countryside into the capital to have them fight the protesters and bystanders, which resulted in some deaths, which numbers are not precisely known, as the government claims that there were only uh, six deaths, while other sources count over 100. Also, two other former presidents were accused of corruption. Former President Liviu Dragna was convicted for electoral fraud and abuse of public office, as well as forming an organized crime group. Meanwhile, former President Victor Ponta was investigated for corruption, but the charges were ultimately dropped. Currently, the leader of PSD is Marcel Chilaku, and yeah, that girl is so cute. I wonder what she's listening to. Moving on, we have the second largest party in parliament, also known as the National Liberal Party, aka Partido Nacional Liberal, or PNL for short. The party, as you can see today, was founded back in 1990, after the revolution, much like the arrival PSD. However, the party itself claims that its origin is much older, and that they actually uh, were founded in the 19th century while Romania was still a kingdom. However, in 1947, the original National Liberal Party was dissolved because uh, obvious reasons are obvious. <laughs> to PNL's ideology, they mostly follow the principles of conservative liberalism, liberal conservatism, as well as pro-Europeanism. Essentially, PNL is a strong advocate for social and economic liberalism. But even though the party is more liberal, they still have a conservative view when it comes to social and religious matters. Nevertheless, the most important issue for PNL is actually taxation. Because as we all know, taxation is tax. stands for uh, lowering taxes and also giving more leeway for businesses so they can uh, actually earn more. They also stand for the decentralization of the Romanian government where the eight regions of Romania would have more uh, say in their local matters and wouldn't rely so much on the central government. But even though they are the second largest party, they are still no strangers to controversy. One of the more major controversies happened in January 2021, where Romania's former Prime Minister, Colin Popescu, got charged for taking over $800,000 worth of bribes over his four years in office. Their current leader is Ludovic Orban, and yeah, that's PNL. Next up, we have USR Plus, aka the Save Romania Union, or Ninunea Salvati Romania Partido Liberate Unitate și Solidaritate in Romanian, which is a very fun name to say, especially if you don't speak any Romanian. Now, this party is relatively new in Romania, as they came onto the scene uh, just this year in 2021 with the union of the USR and Plus Party. And no, I won't be saying their full names again. USR was founded in 2016, meanwhile PLUS was founded two years later, after USR in 2018. In 2019, the two parties wanted to enter the elections uh, as an alliance, however they were denied in doing so. So instead, they just decided to merge into one party and enter the political scene like that. Generally, USR Plus sees themselves as a progressive liberal party that is pro-Europeanism, pro-social liberalism, and pro-economic liberalism, as well as pro-populism. The party mainly focuses on four issues facing Romania, those being justice and protection of the rights of Romanians in the EU, social programs such as welfare, health, education, and poverty measures, European prosperity and foreign and secure policy. Alongside with that, they also advocate for the accession of Romania to the Schengen Zone, as well as reforming agriculture, education and infrastructure. Their current leaders are Dacian Cholos and Dan Varna. Next up is the Alliance for the Union of Romanians, also known in Romanian as Alianza Pentru Unira Romanilor, or R for short. Now, R is another relatively new political party as they came into existence in 2019. Now, unlike most political parties within Romania that live around the center of the political compass, uh, R decides to go a bit on the far right end. They generally see themselves as a right wing party, however, a lot of political commentators see them as a far right nationalist party, as they mainly believe in Romanian nationalism, right wing populism, Romanian Moldovan unionism, 
and a bit of Euroscepticism as well, alongside with eco-nationalism. As you can infer from their name, our biggest issue is the unification of all Romanians, which basically means they stand for irredentism and unification with Moldova, aka the country that's northeast of Romania for all my American viewers. Other than that, our also has four pillars that define their values, those being family, nation, Christian faith, and liberty. The party has even taken the liberty to call themselves as the defenders of the church, whatever that means. The party is also known to be starkly uh, anti-vaccination and anti-social uh, distancing measures which were introduced throughout the 2020 COVID epidemic, such as wearing a mask and no large public gatherings. Alongside that, the political party has condemned the Romanian government for being disinterested in the minority rights of the Romanians living in Serbia and Ukraine. They also made claims they should reclaim the regions of Bessarabia, Northern Bukovina and Herza, which are regions that were annexed by the USSR in the 20th century. R has also criticized the government for giving autonomy to the Hungarians living within the center of Romania, as well as uh, criticized Romanians for celebrating March 15th, which is a national holiday celebrated by Hungarians in Hungary and outside of it, that commemorates the 1848 revolution, and basically celebrates national independence and democracy. One of the more controversial issues that involved R happened in 2019 at the World War I Memorial Center in the Romanian village of Uzvolje, where local Hungarians formed a peaceful protest at Uzvolje War Cemetery over the local government placing illegal monuments for Romanian soldiers, which were believed to not even be buried there. Our members, including the current leader, George Simeon, broke through the police that were protecting the protesters and tore down Hungarian crosses and assaulted the protesters with Romanian flags, which in turn sparked a whole diplomatic situation between Hungary and Romania. Another controversial outlook of R is that they want the biggest uh, minority Hungarian party within Romania, RMDS, dissolved because something something they live in Romania. They are led by George Simeon and Claudio Tarziu, and yeah, that will be the R party. Moving on from the anti bosgor party, we go on to the pro bosgor party, aka the Democratic Alliance of Hungarians in Romania, aka Romania i Democrata Magyar Szövetsi, or in short, RMDS. They were founded immediately after the fall of Ceausescu in 1989 and have more or less been present in the parliament ever since. RMDS is a minority party similar to the Vajdašagi Magyar Suvecik, which I mentioned previously in the Serbian Politics Explained video. Considering this, RMDS doesn't particularly follow any ideology, but rather they focus on minority interests expressed by Hungarians living mostly in Transylvania. Generally, the party has uh, several specific goals they aim for, which are free use of the mother tongue in private and public life, and in the administration and judicial sectors, development of Hungarian language schools, restitution of community and church-owned properties that were taken during the communist days, autonomy and self-governance of CKs, uh, cultural autonomy for all national minorities, and the decentralization of the Romanian administration. Now, RMDS has mostly been in a coalition with the ruling party of Romania, as one of their core beliefs is that if they are pro-government, they will get more out of that rather than opposing it. Next in line is the Humanist Party, aka Partidul Puteri Humaniste, or PPU, <laughs> I said PP, which was founded in 2015. As they split from the Conservative Party, because they did not wish to merge with the Liberal Reformist Party, which the Conservative Party was doing at the time. They are generally seen as a center-left party, as they mostly follow the beliefs of humanism, social liberalism, and protectionism. PP also stands for economic reforms and giving subsidies to the agriculture sector and being more business friendly. Their current leader is Daniel Ionashku, and yeah. Last but not least, we have the Romanian Nationhood Party, aka Partidul Nemului Romanesc, or NR for short. Now, the only information that I could find about them in English was that they were formed in 2019, and that they are anti-immigration, anti-globalization, and they are also against George Soros, because why not? Apparently, they have a lot of generals and military personnel within their party, and they also wish to make a list public, which is apparently full with all sorts of government officials that are under the payroll of George Soros. Their current leader is Nino Peya, and yeah, and those will be all the major parties within Romania. Let me know what you think. Would you vote for any of them? Have you already? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, you've watched Living Ironically in Europe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Yet 